Okay guys, we're going to move on to chapter 3 now, which is on acceleration. So we know from chapter 2, which was motion in one dimension, we looked at, what did we look at? We looked at position, we looked at displacement, right? We looked at distance. What else? We looked at speed, velocity. We looked at all of these. This is chapter two. Now we are going to move on to acceleration. And the first little excerpt, which I think is important, is this. If an object's velocity, so we looked at velocity in chapter two. If the velocity is changing, then the object is accelerating. Now, an important thing here to note that we are quite used to saying that the car decelerated decelerated or accelerated right if the car slowed down we are our, our common word is decelerate and if it speeds up we say it accelerates but here let's ignore this word decelerate and let's just realize that you can have a positive or a negative acceleration so as long as the velocity is changing the object is accelerating, whether it is slowing down or speeding up. The next excerpt here is like velocity, acceleration is a vector. Okay, so it is a vector. It, um, we need both magnitude and direction to specify it. So remember, velocity was written like that, velocity vector. Um, and so how do we represent it with with also with an arrow above it, although I'd probably just do a line, but you can do a line or an arrow. So acceleration is a vector. Next excerpt, the x component of the average acceleration. So take note here, uh, average acceleration is the change of the x component of the velocity. So it's the change in the velocity divided by the time interval. So really what we're saying is this, delta V over delta T. Another way of writing this, remember whenever you see a delta in any, in, in almost anything, if you see a delta T, you see a delta X, a delta V, it's always final minus initial. So this will be V final minus V initial over T final minus T initial. Okay, and just quickly, we haven't gotten to it yet, but in this chapter, or anywhere really, you're going to always find average acceleration, and you're going to find instantaneous acceleration. Average acceleration and instantaneous. I know it's not written like this, but just see the difference. There's an average acceleration and an instantaneous acceleration. The same in chapter 2, we saw an average velocity and then also an instantaneous velocity. Okay, so uh, that's a brief introduction. We will look at an example in the next video.